All right, guys, we're down here at the Bow and Arrow Shop in Lakeside, California again. The best archery pro shop in Southern California by a long shot. And uh, we're here today to shoot the three major flagship bows that Bruce carries. So we're going to shoot the Elite flagship, the PSE flagship, and the Bowtech flagship in all their hunting bows. So we're not going to shoot target bows, just hunting bows. Let's see which one we like the best. Hey. All right, guys, we're down here again at the Bow and Arrow Shop, best shop in San Diego County. And today we're going to do a pretty fun video that Bruce is going to help me out with. We're going to shoot all the major flagship hunting bows. So first up, we got the PSE. Bruce, break it down a little bit. PSE, we kind of did a little thing on the shop Facebook uh, about the PSE, the NXT. For me, on the PSE bow line, this is my favorite bow they made. Um, I like it a little bit better. I take the grip off of it. Most guys, including you, I think, said the same thing. That, uh, a little bit thinner grip, less torque. Oh, um, cool, cool cam design. It's binary cam also. You have a harness system here so you get even pulse. You don't get any cam lean, which essentially makes it into a binary cam. Um, also, you get the 80, 85, or 90 percent let off. Right now, we have it on the 80 percent let off for James to try out. Very smooth draw, lineal, lineal draw, um, but just absolutely dead. Has a roller guide system. A lot of riser here with short little limbs, which for me, I'm a big fan of the short limbs, more efficiency, more accuracy. But a very smooth, dead, dead, dead draw. So this will be the first one we're going to try. Um, not a super, super duper speed bow, it's 322 feet per second IBO, which is 30 inch draw, 70 pound, 350 grain arrow. James, you're not a 30 inch draw, you're not you strong 70, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you guarantee yeah, you don't yeah, shoot yeah. 350 grain arrow. But for me, what I notice is we all shoot range finders, we all hunt range finders, so speed, I'd like my bows to be 285 to 295. I don't yeah. want to be faster. Um, I'm not a speed bow guy, I think it shows a lot of flaws. Plus short and brace height, so um, really, really cool bow. It makes it free to shoot it. Seven inch brace height, so it's very forgiving. Thirty three inch axle action. So this will be the one out of the PSC line that we're going to shoot. Let's do it. All right, so we got the PSC first one out the gate. So pretty much the bow my dad shoots, right? Yeah, a little bit shorter. You got two inch less draw. Feels short to me, but draws. Nice. I find it to be really, really dead bow. So I'm gonna have you shoot a couple with that grip on, and then I'll take it off. Cool. There's two more right for you. Cool. Um, some guys will throw sights on some shops, uh, kind of trying to show you the hold on it. For me, I look for draw, balance, fill, because your hold really comes from, you know, an eight-inch stabilizer compared to a ten compared to a twelve. It's all gonna give you different pin holds. So you can't really base. It. Yeah, it strokes are nice for sure. The one thing it seems like, I don't know if it's because it feels a tad short to me. It feels like a like an inch shorter than my bow. You are a 29, right? Yeah, So, but it feels a tad short, which I've noticed with a couple of the newer bows. Right. It also like really sits when you get it back, kind of humps in and then just sits super solid. But I mean, no oh, hand yeah. shock really. When I first shot it, when I first shot it, when I rep came in, I was like, wow. Yeah. It's it's a, thing. So I'm noticing that this bow draws super smooth, kind of like arcs in, but then it sits really, really, really easy in the back. And like no hand shock. And this bow is pretty bare. So I think uh, PSE certainly killed it on the smooth. Really nice, huh? Yeah. Nice as PSE I've shot. Mm. Shoots good, so I will say it does feel a little short. So if you're going to shoot this bow and you're a 20, that's part of the setup, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Everybody comes in, I like them to try different bows, try all bows, right? But a draw length, I mean, I've shot some bows at 30, some at 29, yep. and some at 29, so they're all going to differ a little bit, yeah. But that's really kind of the fine tune, right? Exactly. I mean, for me, fine tuning to a quarter inch is a big deal, and that's something we're going to cover with the uh, new Elite bow today, too. Is Really, really neat that they can micro adjust by the eighth inch draw. Wow. So, pretty cool setup. Cool. Let's hop into the next one. Right on. All right, so next up we have the Elite flagship. Now, I've shot the PSC before, the last year's model, and I've shot a couple of the most of the Bowtex. I've actually never shot this bow, so we're pretty excited. Um, and, Bruce, tell us a little about it. This is the Cure. So, Elite, very happy for me. It became a modular bow. You can go on this one as a limb stop or cable stop for you shooting a back tension release. Limb stop's a big deal, so they give you an upright post here, so when you draw this bow around, this comes up, stops here. So as a guy that's pulling through his shot, he's going to get no no creep at all. Um, the big thing that I was talking about here, Yeah. so with all these little holes, I can fine-tune this by quarter-inch draw lengths. So I can take you to your set draw, like James said, hey, I feel a little bit wadded up on that bow. So I can take them instead of a half, I can go a quarter, so it's really a fine-tuned system. 
Another cool thing on this is I can shift your pocket back and forth with this technology right here. So I just loosen these screws, turn that, and I can take this whole pocket left or right. Instead of having to shim your cams like you'll see on other bows, I can just move it back and forth right here for center shot for perfection of hand torque or tune of bow for no cameling. I mean that's what everybody in the industry is trying to get away from is cameling on the shot. Um, so if you look at the PSC with the hook, the yoke system, that's even pull on both sides. This you're able to shift the you know, limb back and forth from a pocket if you will, back and forth to give you a center shot for no cameling. Mm. Plus a roller system, adjustability on the roller system. Once again, the three bows you're going to shoot today are just absolutely dead. And they don't weigh a ton and a half. You know, a lot of bows out there, they might be dead bows, but they're a five pound bow. You know, it's just like a rifle or anything else. The heavier it gets, the deader it gets. Right. When you can get a bow that's in that 4244 four pound range, and still just be absolutely dead on shot. For sure. That's that's impressive to me. Same. So, yeah, man. Cool. Rock it. Slide it red. Yeah. There's some good areas out there. I might put out the it's crazy because like at draw this one feels really good drawing though i definitely on one arrow like the psc's draw better you'll pick up a little bit more load here on the draw cycle but dead low oh yeah yeah i mean look it's right in there i can tell it's shorter axle to axle but when you're like i said when it's when it's drawn back the thing is uh feels stable solid can you feel that wall I'm talking about? Oh yeah. So there's no pulling through your shot. It's going to be a repeatable spot. Yeah, it feels good. Those come with a pre-stretch string too. Actually, all three bows come with pre-stretch. These are made by Winner's Choice. Obviously, Elite owns them. Um, PSC makes their own in-house called Livewire, and then Bowtech also makes their own string cables, but very high-end string cables. Bruce, what's axle to axle on this bow? So you're almost 32 inches on your axle to axle. Um, 31 and 13 sixteenths. So, for a guy that has a shorter draw, I think a guy that hits a 29, 29 and a half, 30, you're getting a pretty hard angle for pinch knock. I, I like that. Personally, I like that 30, 30 inch and up axle to axle. Yeah, so, same. But this bow for me, for a guy that likes a short bow, a tree stand or ground blind or a short draw length, beautiful, beautiful. But for you, I notice your string goes a little bit. Yeah, it feels, feels uh, steep. Yeah. Yep. I like it. Let's head into the next one. All right, lastly, we're going to shoot uh, the three, three flagship bows today. We got the Bowtech Revolt X. I have shot this one, but never right after shooting those two. So it's going to be fun to uh, feel it out and see how we like it. Bruce, you want to tell us about it? Revolt X, way cool bow. 33 inch axle to axle, six and a half inch brace. Oh, um, no. Back to tech on this. What's really cool about this is kind of like I was telling you about on the Elite, where you can move the pocket. Botech took it a step up and what they did is they've geared this axle so you can loosen here and gear drive this cam back and forth on both ends. Once again, all we're trying to achieve is no cam lean, perfect down the pipe center shot without having to tweak or twist or shim or anything else. So the tech in this, brand new, Botech just came out with it, Good. really, really cool tech. Another big thing that Botech's known for is their center pivot technology. So what a lot of guys don't realize because with your pivot point out here, that's out in front of your hand, so you're going to tend to get a lot of horizontal torque. But Bowtech, when they invented the center pivot technology, in 07, I believe it was, this center pivot point now is putting the pivot of your bow in line with your hand, so you're going to get rid of a lot of horizontal torque. Something they've had around for a long time that they also invented was the flex guard. So the purpose of the flex guard, when you draw, this flex is in and out. Once again, taking cam lean out of the shot, but also taking flex out of the riser. All bows have X amount of flex on riser. This is also just an elimination of that. Third thing that they came out with is the limb lock technology. So from this system to here to here, this is a lock system. So when you turn this bow up or down, you have to loosen that screw. Big slop on the bows right here. So anytime you can lock this off to zero movement, that's a major, major deal. So center pivot, a geared axle, limb lock technology, and just smooth, smooth, smooth and dead. You also have on this, which is kind of cool, you can flip this mod so you can have what's considered a smooth draw or a more aggressive draw. They call it performance setting or a comfort setting. Right now, we have it on comfort because once again, what I want to know is when I'm sitting up in a tree stand or a ground blind or spotting stock and at 12 degrees, me and James were just talking about hunting this morning, it was cold. You know, when you have to sit for two, three, four hours and draw this bow smooth and steady, I hunt with the range finder, so I'm more concerned about it. I want something I can draw that's not going to make me contort and draw hard. So. For me, this is a very smooth, dead, 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 dead bow. But a lot of technology in the bow. And I tell guys all the time, 
you start spending this kind of money, what James is doing is what I do with anybody that comes in here. Shoot every bow made. You should be buying a bow because it fits you, the draw cycle, the balance, the string angle we covered. Um, but also the technology. I mean, the more that I can do on a bow as a, as a gearhead, for you as a shooter is a major, major, major deal. So when you start looking at high-end flagship bows, don't buy a bow just because of the name. Buy a bow because of the tech in it and what it can do for you as a shooter. Boom. Slitter eat. That's the best draw, for sure, for me. I just like this one, man. It feels good. It's dead, huh? I mean, just feels absolutely good. Dead. No vibration. The draw doesn't hump as hard as the PSC did at the end, and it's a lot. So it's like a one stage drop. Something, something that you really like. Try this real quick, James. Go to let this one down slow. So you've got a monster dwell zone, but yeah. the big thing is, is it's not a rip your shoulder out of the socket when you let down. So they've given you an oversized stop on top. So when you go to let down, it gives you a little bit more comfortable of a let down. But just stupid dead bow. Yeah, I mean it. Uh Definitely feels good for sure. I mean, for me personally, and like you said, everyone has is going to have a different feel, but I would rank them fairly easily. This one first, the PSC second, and the Elite third. It's not that I didn't like the other, the Elite, but just the other two fit me better. Obviously, your point's nice for you, too. Good shoot. So, the arrow we're going to chrono with It's going to be a 418 grain arrow. Gold tip 340. So that's about your most average arrow. So James, what I wanted to do with this one, like I said earlier, it's a 340. That's going to be your most common arrow. But I like to give a guy, I mean, 420 grain arrow is what we're going to call 418 actual. You know, that's that's a good hunting way You know, when you start seeing guys with 360 grain arrows, like I get nervous about that. You know, if you hit that shoulder, you're not going to have that punch. So that's a good common arrow for a guy. Cool. So these are all the same, 2970. Scoot back a little bit, James. I'm going to walk you right through that corner. Walk into my hand a little bit. Keep coming. Come up with bow. Up with bow. Up with bow. Up with bow. Send it. <laughs> All the way through the target. 298 feet per second. So that's the uh, elite we just shot there. And like Bruce said, we're shooting the same arrow. Same poundage, same draw length on all three. So this one, the Elite cranked out 298, and uh, we'll move on to the next one. James, on this one, like I said earlier, we're on the comfort setting. So you're going to lose, they say 10 feet, but I'm noticing it's more like nine. So when you flip that disc over, it's a nine to 10 foot gain. You get a little bit more aggression in your draw cycle. I like the load on it up here, which makes me happy. But once again, I'm a comfort guy. So for me, you're going to gain whatever we shoot chrono here, tack another 9 to 10 onto it. Cool. Come up in front, stop. Right there. Send it. So you figure 285, we flip it over to the speed mode, you're going to be 295. Um, same thing once again, you guys know all the specs on it, so we're just going to send it through the chrono, see what she does. There's no comfort or performance setting on it, so this is what you get. PSC, let's do it. Hey, this is Jeff. I'm good, man. How are you? Come up in the roof. Stop. Send it. So you're right there, and that does show IBO as being the slowest out of the three, so. But once again. Okay. So basically, all of them. The Elite was the fastest by quite a bit. It was 295. The Botech on Comfort was 285. And the PSC was 280. So they're all pretty close, but the Elite was quite a bit up front. Um, is there any way we could try it on the speed? So, yeah, let's, we can flip that disc over. You're going to gain nine. That should put you really, really yeah, comparable yeah. Compared, compared to. Now, let's in the same breath, yeah. your first statement on the Elite was you noticed to be a little bit aggressive on the draw. Yeah. So now you're going to pick up. A little bit of aggression on that Revolt X, okay. but you're going to get the speed. So what's cool about that, for me, hey man, I might have a bad shoulder, or, or he might be 100%, so hey, maybe I want some speed, flip the disc, you got it. That's oh cool. man, I injured myself, man, man, I need to go back down to cover. So you really have two bows in one, I guess, the That's way awesome. I kind of look at it, right? I love it. Yep, yep. Okay. Okay. All right, man, so we flipped the disc, you're now on the performance setting, so like I said, you should get somewhere around that 9 to 10 feet per second.
Cool. We're going to pick up a little bit different draw cycle though. Just have a load on the it just packs more towards the end, right. but it still feels good. Okay, come up. Up. Stop. Send it. Yep. So like I said, you're gonna get they say ten, but it's more like nine. So if we can fudge that up a little or then you might get one or two more. So basically it ended up being that the Elite was fastest by only by three foot a second over the Revolt X and the her power setting, um, but I still think the draw on this one, even in the power setting, to me, is quite a bit smoother than this one was. So, three feet a second's not really much, um, and the draw feels quite a bit better. So what I always ask is, what do you want to draw on a 12 yeah. degree day when you've been sitting for four hours? You know what I mean? Exactly. That's what I got. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Right on, man. Alrighty guys, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. It was a ton of fun heading into the bow and arrow shop today to shoot all the flagship bows and see which one I liked the best. For me, it was pretty easy. The Revolt X was my favorite, followed by the PSC and then the Elite. They're all great. It just comes down to personal preference and what fits you best. So if you're looking to get into archery or you're looking to upgrade your bow, head down to the bow shop, shoot some bows, find out what you like the best. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and smash a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next one.